Check one, two, check. Check. check, one, two, check. Oh, it's coming through a different shit. Okay. Oh, I know why. Here I thought everything was set up correctly, but it's not. Output device, there we go. There we go, all right. <clears throat> Booga bunk. Ooga bunk. Daba duba. Ooga mooga. <clears throat> oh shit. Okay. So this is the three-in-one disc that came with the uh, Turbo Duo. Uh, the cool thing is there's a code you can put in to actually activate Bomberman as well, the original Bomberman, which is a chip game. Um, so you got Bonk's Adventure, Bonk's Revenge, which, you know, that's their mascot, even though Bonk showed up on other consoles, uh, and then Bomberman. So it wasn't a bad deal. You got four free games. The, the Bomberman was hidden, so you didn't know you were getting a fourth. But uh, this is the game... Of that this is just one of the best shmups ever made in my opinion um i used to be able to go through this entire game one cc because i i was testing this game actually <clears throat> before the duo came out and funny enough the version of this game that they sent me to test wouldn't run on the turbo graphics with the cd unit and the super cd card there was, there was a bug in the pre-release version. So one day, a Turbo Duo just showed up at the house. <clears throat> so that was really cool. That's why I cherish my Duo so much. But I love this game. And it's got an awesome soundtrack. Man, this new video interface is fucking awesome! Awesome opening. 
and you're gonna get some audio weirdness every now and then. There, there's an audio fix for the, the Suppress SD3, but it wasn't available when uh, when I had the video fixed. So, devil, uh, couldn't remember what's all on. Here. All right, be gentle because I haven't played this game for a while. on my ship hut freaking out. Right it's a normal thing with uh, modern capture devices. It's funny when you think about it.
blown away the first time I saw this. It's not really scaling, but it was still cool. Oh shit, I'm going.
murder the... first time back in a long time all right so i figured i'd do some of the games that are supposed to be in the turbo graphics mini <clears throat> um no i thought oh well i'll go turn it i'll turn it back on First on the list that I have is Alien Crush. So this, uh, I'm gonna say this was the launch title, or soon after launch. Uh, pinball game, very very fun. Uh, the follow-up Devil's Crush is one of my favorite games. Um, Using a joystick, so. second button for it. And this is definitely a good uh, addition to the, to the main. The mechanics are pretty solid in it. It's a fun game. There was kind of a remake that was brought on on anywhere. Desirable about this game, especially compared to Devil's Crush, is that it doesn't scroll up to the upper level uh, to switch screens. And that can be kind of
Ah, bonus screen. <clears throat> that one you gotta turn on the three blitz in the three spots. Find out if I have that turned on or not. Ah, I don't. Okay. Uh, next up, Victory Run. I am not a fan of this game. Uh, so this is a, a rally racing game, and the problem is you have to shift the gears and everything, and then you have to worry about damage. So. Tires can be damaged, your transmission, all that kind of stuff. I don't like the shifting. <clears throat> this is not just low and high like I'll run. I think it's like three or four gears. Um, I've just never been a fan of it. I think graphics and everything are good. Okay, so 20 parts. But I'm not a big fan of this game. The other problem is that sometimes when you're trying to go left and right, you accidentally hit up or down and you shift gears accidentally. And when you hit those little hills like that, it like, can screw you up. Seems like the cars, especially those big trucks, don't even fit in a lane. So you have to go off the track. You feel like you have to go off the track. And there we go. So now that I crashed, I actually have to shift back and first manually. I still don't like that. little hippity 
jumps and really screw you with this song. There you go. Ah. So glad I didn't buy this one. Bought the system really well. This next game, though, is, in my opinion, the best launch game ever made on any system. Can I get it to reset? There we go. Uh, I adore this game. I love the soundtrack. Uh, I actually listen... I don't, I'm not a chip tunes guy, but uh, I listen to this music... <laughs> I really love the soundtrack of the uh, soundtrack of the PC Engine slash Turbo Graphics. I just I've always been a fan of it. <clears throat> Actually, I had this as my ringtone for a while. I think I still have it on the list here. grab those items uh, because that adds to your shield or to your bombs I mean so not the weapons but the items See in the lower left. Ah, I fucked that up. Uh, my bombs are increasing now. And then those pink orbs <clears throat> will upgrade your weapon. But every level that you go up, the need bubbles basically. So. When you're at your first level and you grab one, it'll take you to level two, but then you need to grab two of them to go to the next level, four of them to go to the next level, etc. 
but it's also good points. So if you're in a score race with this game, which we were in Trayvon Terrors a few years ago, uh, that's the secret sauce that you need to know. <clears throat> solid this game is. And I'm sure I'm not going to do very well, but... Come on! The soundtrack is so damn good, too. Item can be upgraded twice. Or upgraded once after you grab the initial. Multi buy. Okay, so the little thing that I'm hitting now, the little orb, when you shoot it enough. Oh crap! Why'd the game reset? I bet just because I have that trigger turned on. Because it's incompatible with some games. Oh well. Uh, that thing, if you keep shooting it, it'll, it'll all of a sudden make a sound and it'll start flashing and it slowly creeps up. If you grab that, it's uh, it clears the entire screen, but also it lets you, when you die, you don't have to start at a checkpoint anymore. When you die, you start where you died. So that's a big deal. Well, that sucks. I'm going to turn that off then, I guess. I'll just turn it back on and off on my own. Uh, In-game trigger. Turn that off. Darn it! Okay. Uh, Newtopia. <clears throat> I'm just going to play a little bit of Newtopia 1 and 2 because uh, they're RPGs. They're fantastic. Oops. Newtopia. And you're going to notice really quick that uh, it's not totally original. Man, this is great. So I don't have I don't have the HDMI output to my monitor from this device. So I'm playing on the uh, the streaming screen, and the window's really tiny. But I just realized I could drag the thing down.
Go west, young man. And it is actually a really good game. It's, yes, it's a copy of Legend of Zelda. Uh, not not the, the map layout or anything else, but there's a lot of things they copy. Uh, <clears throat> and again, this next game, I won't play too much of it. Uh, it's Newtopia 2. But there's something really cool about this game. Um, I mean, they really did update it quite a bit. And one cool thing about this game that I don't think is even on the box is that the audio is actually built for Dolby Pro Logic. <clears throat> so kind of a pseudo surround, but it actually is encoded with Dolby Pro Logic. SNES, obviously, Super Famicom is at a different level, but I would take the sound on this system over the Genesis any day of the week. And that's not just because I'm a TurboGrafx fanboy. I'm, I'm being very serious. <clears throat> Ooh, the magic compass! He can walk diagonally. Yay! Huge update. Ha! Oh shit. Ooh, bombs. I think we just saw this. So I'm just going down the list of what's on the TurboGrafx Mini that we know of. Uh, the website for that thing, it's weird because they, they show all the games, but um, they have a different list for the TurboGrafx for the PC Engine uh, Mini in Japan and the PC Engine Mini in Europe. So I don't know if my list is accurate. 
So this is another fun game that I think got overlooked by a lot of people. <coughs> um, when you see it, it looks a lot like Gauntlet. And so a lot of people said, oh, this is Gauntlet clone, but it's not. It's actually a pretty deep RPG from Atlas. And they actually released a Dungeon Explorer CD on Sega CD, and then I think they did a Dungeon Explorer on the Wii, on WiiWare on the Wii, I think. And the cool thing is, this is up to five players. I'll be honest, I have not ever really played this game very much. I own it. Um, but we never really got into it. And I think it's because we probably discounted it as a gauntlet club, which makes no sense because I love gauntlet. <laughs> So next up is a game that you've seen on a lot of systems from this era. And the funny thing is, in Japan, this game was actually on two Hue cards. Two. And because they don't want to have any high meg cards in Japan uh, out, of a, out of cost reasons. Uh, so the American one actually has both halves of the game on one cartridge. Or on one Hue card. A lot of people consider this, for the time, probably the best uh, port of the game. Uh, it was really big on, like, Master System. I'm going to pause it for a second and make sure the audio is not too loud. I'll be honest, I don't play our type very much. <laughs> I've never been a big fan. I like it. I mean, like, our type Delta on the PlayStation, I love. Our type 3 in the SNES, but. It's never really ever been my series. Damn it. Looks good, though. My buddy uh, Trickman Terry actually has the arcade version of this at home in the cabinet. Wow. Sorry, head hand. Alright, next game. Uh, yeah, here's a game that I do not like at all. <clears throat> uh, I think the control is terrible. Uh, the, the control mechanics of it. And there's a sequel in Japan, and I think I think they said they're putting it on the US version as well. I'm not sure. But I hate this game. I'm not going to play it very long. 
I was recording some video of this early on and basically rage quit. is the control scheme because originally I thought you were just turning right and left even though it's overhead. I thought you were turning right and left by but I think you actually point in the direction that you want to go. the other problem with this game is that it's a neat concept, but the whole teleporting thing is a little weird. player maybe but obviously this computer car in the blue I can catch up to it. Because the other button's a brake there's no turbo or anything. Oh boy. Man. I just don't like this game. <clears throat> but I won the most? Oh that's how much I have. Okay. Here's an interesting one, uh, Power Golf. I didn't buy this one, came out. And I like golf games on, like, golf video games, Neo Turf Masters, stuff like that. Um, this game has promise. When you turn it on and start playing it, it's got promise. But so many things are missing that I'm even spoiled with from... Like, no turf masters and even some of the games earlier. Like, knowing how far you have to go. <clears throat> I 
it, it, it's a good looking game. But knowing which club to use sometimes. And this, this is a bitch. Yeah, getting that second hit is just so bad. Okay, let's try this again. the sand, will not I? Yep. Oh, shit. Yeah, knowing which club to use, uh... Damn it! And of course, the tree's gonna be right in my way. See, like, so here, I have 97 yards left. Now, if I'm not a golfer, I'm not going to know what club I need. It's just, it's weird. It should suggest a club or something. Oh, my God. That was awful. Okay, so now I have 41 yards. Cutting's a bitch. Oh. Oh! Okay, eight strokes. Woo. Next game is awesome. <clears throat> so this is a defining game for the Tor Graphics uh, CD, especially. Um, when anybody talks about the Turbo Graphics PC Engine Turbo Duo, uh, th this game comes up. I'm just gonna let you watch the intro. I'm not. I probably won't even play the game. Uh, but you have to remember, back in the in the 8-bit, 16-bit days, Turbo Graphics was the first CD system out, and th this was a well-known RPG on the Master System and on uh, I think the PC88 or something like that in Japan. And it's a good RPG, uh, and that's back. <laughs> this came out back when I actually played RPGs sometimes, but the production values. And not only of the game itself, but of the fact that the U.S. Ver the U.S. arm of NEC this isn't even Turbo Technologies yet. The U.S. arm of NEC paid the extra money to have like real voice actors uh, voice all the parts in this game because there's a lot of a uh, voice. One of them being Thomas Hayden Church, who you know from Wings. He was he's been in some other stuff. Uh, he was he was in that wine movie can't remember the name of it uh but he's also uh he was sandman on one of the spider-man movies <clears throat> but just watch this intro and you'll see why everybody my age back then when they launched this game their jaw was after about two minutes and i'm going to turn the microphone off
Ys, the ideal utopia. Once a country so peaceful and prosperous. A country where children were as free as the wind. A country where harmony blew through the hearts of all men. Ys, a kingdom ruled by the wisdom and charity of its six powerful priests. An empire watched over and blessed by the enchanting aura of its two beautiful goddesses. Ys, the seemingly tranquil paradise suddenly pulled from the height of its civilization to the empty abyss of infinite isolation. How could such a land of promise simply vanish from the face of the planet? How could such prosperity be forgotten? The legend has been silenced for over 700 years. And now, the mystery unfolds. I apologize if the audio is kind of topping out. Uh, it's a problem with the Super SSD3 that I want to get fixed, but uh, the guy that made the fix doesn't make them anymore. Uh, so I'm trying to find a solution. Oh. <clears throat> There's another cool opening. <laughs> and this game is why I had the video mod done to the FPGA because RGB out of that box to anything I had, the OSSC, whatnot, the text was really messed up in this game. <clears throat> so I believe it was only East Book 1 on Master System. This has two different games in it. That's why it's called Book 1 and 2. <clears throat> and I did finish this entire disc back then uh this is probably i think i was out of high school by then i'm not sure though but check out this opening it's pretty cool I just want to see some of the text in this. I'll go on to the next game.
<clears throat> that looks better. The funny thing is, this is all chip music. This isn't CD music at all in this. Oh man, the text looks great now! so much better now. <clears throat> oh, this is awesome. I wonder if I still had a video that I recorded. Maybe I'll put that up as an example. It was so bad. Like, it was almost unreadable. I can't buy enough stuff. Like, I have to go out and fight to get enough money to buy armor, I want to say. Yeah, I don't, enough, I don't have enough money to get a shield, that's right. That's how much this is. 2,000? My god, man. Yeah, so now I have to go out and fight and, and grind, basically, to get enough money to buy armor. But this is all I really want to do. I'll show you some combat, if maybe. And then you can go back in here and get healed. <clears throat> Thousand? Oh my god. Okay. Ah! Silver sword, huh? Man, this video looks fantastic. Now we're on to some CD music. So the combat in this game is pretty funny. It's not uh, turn based, it's real time. And we call it linebacker combat because you basically just have to run into everybody. And if you get them straight, more damage. And that's literally the combat. But if you get, if you hit him in the back, it's you get better damage. If you hit him in the front, they might have a shield and armor. Uh, and if you get him from the, like a corner, sometimes it can mess things up too. So there I am. I'm taking damage. Now. Oh shit! A lot of damage. And that's how you build up gold and grind. My heat, my health is back up. The comeback cracks me up in this game. And if you were a fan of the uh, podcast at all back when Mark was on, this is his favorite series. He actually named his daughter after a character in this series. <laughs> So that's Eastbook 1 and 2. It, it's fantastic. It really is. And this is coming from someone that doesn't play RPGs very much. Uh, it's fantastic. What's the next game? Ah! So this next game uh, is Ninja Spirit. This was an IRM arcade game. And... The port is fantastic. Not only that, it's 
a really, really good game that I stink at. And I'm decent at it until there's a certain point where the entire level is you falling, and you just keep falling and falling and falling, and you can't attack at all. You just have to dodge, and it's all memorization. And my friends and I worked all night on it, <clears throat> just trying to memorize it. And we couldn't. It was so complex. And I've never finished this game. But as you can see, it's really effing cool. But the cool thing is then you can... It's called Ninja Spirit, so one of the things you can do... Is... PC Engine Mode? Oh, I bet it just makes it Japanese. Uh, you get these other spirits that follow you around. It's almost like your shadow. And their attacks work as well, but they can't be damaged. <clears throat> so it's really cool. I'm not going to play much, because... Okay, there's that. And you can jump really high. So now I've got one of those spirits. Ah. I think you can get up to four? Oh, three. It can't be four. It fills the screen too much. But the cool thing about this game, I mean, it really doesn't have much in terms of slowdown. Really, really solid graphics. Great audio. Uh, and great control, too. Oh, there's some slow. Now you'll see some flicker and slow down here with this big boss. It's this big statue. But one of the things you want to do with this is figure a way to place those spirits. So there's some strategery involved, and then you can press up to just kind of swipe up, and then you do this to swipe down. There we go. <clears throat> So that's Ninja Spirit. Uh, considered one of the better games, especially early on for the system. Uh, it's, it's really solid, and it's a great port of the arcade game. What you doing, babe? Huh? Oh, take a big yawn. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, this next one is a weird game. I'm not a big fan of it, but it's an interesting story. JJ, I think this was the launch title too. So it's an interesting story because this is uh, obviously came out in Japan. Uh, it's called Kato and Ken in Japan, which was a basically a television variety show. And you can see some of the clips on YouTube. It's, it's pretty interesting stuff. But the funny thing about it is that you'll see that I, I'm not gonna play very much. I don't like this game, but you'll see I have like a spray can. <clears throat> In Japan, one of the weapons was you could poop out a pile of poop, and they took it out of the U.S. version for some reason. 
but the characters are actually based in Japan. They look like that Kato and Ken. These are just two nondescript dudes. Actually, I'm not even going to play it. But it's so interesting because I didn't know that story until years later. I heard it was based on a Japanese game and it was some kind of a TV thing, but I didn't know anything about it until probably a couple of years ago. Or more than a couple. <coughs> but I don't... I didn't own this game until recently because I got it really cheap because I just didn't care about it. I had rented it back then and... Eh. I'll let another little demo run and we'll go to a different, different game. Yeah, it's a little spray can. So in Japan, instead of a spray can, you bend over and you fart on things. Oh, all right. Enough of the silliness. Sneeze. This one, you all know, I'm not a big fan of this game. I never have been. Uh, Peace Engine version is pretty good. The problem was it was reprogrammed by NEC Avenue, and they're notorious for kind of not being very good. Uh, but it's it's a passable game. Again, I'm not going to play it very much. What does this mean? There we go. Oh, in the video. Yep. So I had this problem before. I had this problem when I was recording it before. It, were, it uses a weird video mode. And... It doesn't like to record. So I guess we're not playing Space here. I could always try the card. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do that next time. So, Military Madness is a hex-based strategy game. And it's two-player. You can play it against a computer, but it's two-player. Insanely deep. Uh, it's called Nectaris in Japan. There's, I think there's a Nectaris game that came out on WiiWare as well. Uh, but there's also a Neo Nectaris for uh, the Japanese Peace Engine CD. And it's really good, but it's in Japanese. So I can only do so much. <clears throat> but this is a pretty deep game. It doesn't look like it much, but whenever it's turn-based uh, combat. But it takes into account a lot of different environmental things. So... If you're up on, if you've got an elevated uh, uh, position, you'll get more points. If you're, you know, in cover, you get more more hit points, that sort of thing. Uh, you have better, if you have better cover, then you have better defense. I'll display a, a couple of tries. It's funny, my cousin, when I lived in um, Kansas City, my cousin and I played this game all the time. The one flaw of this game is that if you have the first move, you have a ridiculous advantage, we found out. So we would always flip a coin for who got to go first. So all heck based. Uh, so I can move this, I'm gonna move this guy up to here maybe? That's a tank, and then you can say that's my last move for that guy. And it also takes into account like if you're if you've got two tanks next to each other, or if you have you know three or four next to each other in a line or whatever. If you're if you can kind of circle your enemies, you get better stats. So it's a pretty deep game. There. So I'm gonna kill these guys and show you what combat looks like. So it shows 
There you go. And it's always in units of eight. Every one of these represents a unit, uh, eight units. But that's Military Madness. It, it's actually a really deep game and it's a lot of fun with two players especially. This next game is really colorful. Um, I've never been a fan of it just because it's not my style of game. But I actually recently bought this, maybe a couple of years ago, finally. Uh, it's basically a puzzle game. <clears throat> Man. No diagonals, no jail bars, nothing. This is awesome. I don't even know how to play this game. Oh yeah, I think I have to... That's where I can push him. Whoops. I screw myself. Oh, fuck. All right, well, that's true, Manfu. Nice colors, though. anymore I'm going, I'm going through a lot of the u.s releases <clears throat> i think this is on u-card so psychosis is another shmup uh one thing about the shmup graphics especially in the pc engine are if you like shmups shoot them ups uh it's the system for you i'm not a big fan of this one Looks good, you know, the whole thing. Um, my controller is not working. Did you pull it out? Oh, it works. That was weird. And it's a nice, colorful game. Uh, I don't like the color palette in this game too much, though. But a lot of scrolling backgrounds, uh, multiple layers of scrolling background, which is rare on the on the on the hue cards. play this game though so I don't know any of the, like, the actual mechanics. Ah! Okay, so I can't do that.
Okay, so that's a shield. And I can turn that and get the button. doesn't really do it for me. The other problems is, I mean, look at this. They're really kind of stretching the, the limits of the hardware. They could have chosen not to. So Bunk, like I said, was the mascot that they were trying to really push for the system. I'm not a big mascot guy. I don't sound like the Hedgehog. I don't like this. I don't like the Bonk series. I um, figured I'd show you the second one at least. Uh, I like Mario, but... Uh, let's do that. I, don't know. I never played the series either. Now, in this one, can you do the... Okay. So that was one trick that a lot of people figured out early on with this game is... Um, if you hit the turbo, and the turbo's on every controller. If you hit the turbo, you can pretty much fly across the, uh, the screen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good time to get him some building. So that's Monk's Revenge. Uh, again, I'm not a big fan, but they're solid. They're popular. Hi. Help me with your tail now. <clears throat> Hi, baby. What you doing? Eh, it's getting pretty late, huh? I'll do one more game and then we'll go downstairs. How about that? Uh, some good games on this list. I'll do Lord of Thunder. Um, I'm not very good at it anymore, but... Oh, shit. It's a pretty astounding game. Kind of the... Um, spiritual sequel to Gate of Thunder, which I, I adore. <clears throat> I love this game, too. There's actually a Sega CD version of it, and I'm not that thrilled with it. Uh, they changed a lot of stuff around. It looks decent on the Sega CD, but this is one of the games that, when you compare them, this has so much more color and great soundtrack. We'll go downstairs in a few minutes. I went OUT this morning pretty late, so you should be alright soon. You're doing the circle me thing. You're circling me. Yeah, you're circling me. I know. Let me play the first level of this and we'll go down there. Okay, it's lunchtime anyway. I'm not sure if I can get it in the camera. Oh shit, sorry. Oh no, this is the stick that I'm using. It's uh, from Hori. I saw one for the Sega Saturn. It's awesome. My Benj Edward one is downstairs at that I had built. <clears throat> but I love this stick. It was really hard to get a hold of. I'll just do the first level if I can get through it. <clears throat> Thought it'd be interesting. I 
nice to know everything about this game. Like, where to use what and... Man. I fucked up. Fucked up already. Okay, I got the right arm. make it through the first level. <laughs> not good. Yep, I'm not Alright, well, I'm stop for now. Uh, I'll probably stream the rest of the game on the, on the mini later today, but someone needs to go to UT, and it's also lunchtime. So... I'll put this up on YouTube as well. Hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks very much. I'm so happy. Uh, if you're interested in the video cable I'm using, uh, it's retro gaming cables out of Europe. Um, and they make them for a bunch of different systems like the Genesis. Uh, and, and they, they do it for like modded turbo graphics uh, systems. And that's where I screwed up. I, for some reason, ordered it for the turbo graphics. And um they were nice enough to send me the right cable uh which it's really cool it's just a little plug they have it's got a retro tank 2x between it between that and the mini hdmi that you plug in and this i, I love the retro tank i've got the retro tank scart right here which uh is awesome if you have a, any scart stuff like saturn and i have a scart cable for the jaguar for the playstation um and I had one for the for the Super SSD as well, <clears throat> but I think the cable I had was it's kind of bad. It's 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 not like an Amazon special, but it's just I got a lot of noise. Uh, and I loved the fact that retro gaming cables actually had their own solution with the retro tank in the middle, so that it's up converted to, to uh, 40p, 40 by 480. And I couldn't be happier with this video. Uh, no noise whatsoever. No diagonal. Uh, noise, no jail bars, nothing. And this is out of the Super SSD 3 um, directly. So there's a, an RGB cable out of this cable. I'd show you, but it's plugged in. Uh, and then it goes to a RetroTank 2X, like its own little case, really tiny. 
<clears throat> and then there's a mini HDMI ca cable that you plug in. That's what I'm using. And I could not be happier. I, this is what I've been trying to find for a while. So kudos to everybody. And uh, talk to all soon.